Tyler Gaming here today with an EU4 Empire review and today we will be reviewing my Holy Roman Empire save. Now I started this save about two weeks ago um, and this was before the Rights of Man. I thought I'd get a quick game in before that DLC came out. Unfortunately uh, it, it didn't, it took me a while to finish uh, as, as I had school, you know, other commitments. But um, I finally finished it about a week after the Rights of Man release and as you can see top here I have a timeline which you probably saw at the start of this video just a quick little uh, feature that will be adding to my Empire reviews because yes I did get Mary Nostrum and yes I did get Rights of Man and yes I will be doing a Let's Play uh, possibly a cop with NATO but um, anyway let's get right into the Empire review so obviously wow wow big big Empire um, this Empire spans, if I go back on the regions mode, this empire spans all of Europe, um, excluding Britannia because uh, Britannia is not part of the Europe, Euro, Euro, EU anymore, so yeah, it's not part of Europe, so we'll just exclude, we'll just exclude Great Britain, although I did, late in the game, I did get some conquests into Europe, obviously, uh, sorry, not Europe, anti-Europe, Great Britain, <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm still calling that, that was a bit of late game action, uh, started that war in about 1819, so you know, that's a bit late. Um, where do I start? Okay, so as you can see, I start off as Austria. That's a small nation, but very powerful as it starts off as the Holy Roman Emperor. So what I did to amass this, this great empire is uh, I simply started by... My first goal was to obviously regain, as I said in my forming the HRE video, regain Italy. So the... You have the Shadow Empire, I think that's what it's called, Shadow Empire event. And if you do not conquer, if these five provinces are not in the... Well, sorry, I should say if the regions of Emilia, Romagna and Central Italy, yeah, Central Italy and Emilia, Romagna, if those two region areas are not fully in the HRE, doesn't matter if you own it or another person owns it in the HRE, they just have to be in the HRE. Um, so yeah, you have to own that and... If not, by the year 18, 1490, um, everywhere in North, Northern Italy will give the, have the option to leave the Empire, which is detrimental to the progress of forming the HRE. So what my first goal was, was to get that, obviously, and I did, um, using a vassal, Urbino, and um, eventually I conquered Rome, which is a devastating thing to do early in the game, because as you can see, occupation of Rome, Minus 10, you can say goodbye to being the Pope or getting any of the, you know, the features that come with that. But you can also lose one diplomatic reputation, which sucks once you're getting all these vassals. Speaking of vassals, um, oh sorry, speaking of expansion, I should say, I didn't expand much apart from obviously through non-HRE lands, adding them to the Empire. Um, obviously, there's no empire, so I can't, can't show you, but I started off with my expansion, obviously in Italy, but I also got the uh, Charles I event, so as Charles I dies, uh, you inherit, the emperor inherits most of the land, I think it's the emperor, I don't know, I think it's just either Austria or Spain inherits most of the land here, and France also gets some land. Uh, France may have started off as my main enemy, as well as the Ottomans and Poland. I think, I think it was Poland or, no, 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 I had an ally with Bohemia and Hungary, as well as Spain. Um, so yeah, obviously I started off, I started off enemies with France and Ottomans, I wanted to wipe them off as soon as possible. In fact, one of my first wars was with France, I think it was to humiliate them. A strategy I've seen employed by the Daniel from Paradox Interactive, very smart. Uh, so anyway, another, another word of expansion. I uh, inherited, not inherited, I inherited, yeah, I inherited a personal union with Hungary. So no wars, no nothing diplomatic. It just came up, pop screen, pop up screen came up and said you've in, you've entered a personal union. So that was a bit snazzy, uh, pretty cheeky personal union right there. Um, shortly after that, uh, the the continent was divided between Protestant. Obviously, you can see here Protestant England. Um, most of I'd say most of Central Germany was Protestant. And that's obviously, if you're playing this game, detrimental, like I said before, um, to the progress of your empire, of building this empire. Because, you know, you have to convert them, they reduce your imperial authority, it was hell to start off with. Um, but during that, those wars, I managed to 
uh, enforce a personal union. I claim the throne of Bohemia, who used to be my ally. Then I, you know, obviously claim their throne, force them into a personal union. So that was nice. Um, after that, uh, as you can see on the timeline, I'll probably put up some pop-ups as to when I when some certain events happened. I'm pretty sure I expanded down here quickly. Um, once I annexed Hungary, I expanded through Ottoman territory. Um, not as fast, but I try to establish as much of a border as I can. And I try to obviously cut them off from the Adriatic Sea so they can't easily attack me. And um, most of my game was, as you can see, Nitra was released eventually. Uh, most of my game was diplomatic. I, I try to release as much nations as possible to increase the imperial authority, obviously adding them to the Empire. And obviously adding those provinces to the Empire as well. Um, after all those conquests, I believe it was a time Spain had annexed Naples, you know, obviously they did the Iberian Wedding, you know, who would have guessed? Um, and Spain had annexed Italy, little southern Italy, Naples. And um, it's at that point where I, they were Habsburg, and I claimed their throne. And obviously, like I did with Bohemia, I declared war on him. And it was... Quite the Pyrrhic victory, actually. I think I don't have the rights of man, you know, pop-up screen that tells you the casualties, but I think I think more people died on my side than did on Spain's. Although I did win the war, so that was good. Got the person you know for Spain, and I just spent about five years, ten years, just recovering from that. That was just crazy. Um, so yeah, I secured the person you in the Spain. My empire was going great. Um, by the way, I didn't mention before, but this is probably one of the best empires I've ever done, and. Um, proud to show it off because obviously Holy Roman Empire isn't actually that easy. This is Iron Man, completely Iron Man. Holy Roman Empire isn't the easiest thing to achieve but you know it's not the hardest. Obviously people uh, do the Ryuku Three Mountains achievement. So yeah. Um, after after the conquest of Spain, well I wouldn't say conquest, you know, uh, installment of the personal union, my attention focused kind of to this direction as Poland was growing. Um, not as much as they would have. I think they they inherited, um, they got the person who used Lithuania, obviously, but they weren't, oh, I think Russia, Moscovy took some chunks out of them early, so they weren't as powerful as they probably would have been. So I just took some chunks out of them eventually, fed them to my vassals, and while that was going on, I was also focused on doing the reforms, converting, uh, think, uh, converting, you know, heretics, um, I didn't actually manage to have a religious. I did not manage to have a religious war, which is surprising. Um, it just I just got the dominant faith. Catholic was Catholicism was the dominant faith. Got the cup, the event series, and um, it was all peaceful. And eventually, I just enforced the unity of many many nations. And when it came time, as you saw in the video, to uh, you know form the HRE, uh, many states that were even Catholic, I, I, most of them were Protestant, but even Catholic states did not join the HRE. So, well, this great empire that will be the HRE. So, I had to, uh, they had to join by force, unfortunately. Uh, so, that sucked. Um, another late game thing was after I took care of Poland or in Prussia, that was what was le left of Prussia, I should say, in Poland. Um, I started to focus the attention to my old, old ally. I think from the start of the game, they were my ally. Um, against Russia, because they were pushing somewhere like a, you know, average Russia border. So I decided to just punch holes in them. I um, obviously got this chunk out here, this chunk out here, and then I just steamrolled past, got Moscow without any too much damage, I should say. And um, I've just established the border right here. And um, like I said before, I've been I've been making client states. I think I had one here, Latin Empire, and I just used them to you know feed feed um, provinces to them because obviously I couldn't use all the admin power. Um, same thing I did here with the Normandy. I fed most of France with them. Um, that was nice. And Venice, I vassalized in a late war, probably 1800s, and um, used several vassals along the way to feed, such as Savoy. I fed all their cores back to them, then annexed them. Uh, now, probably the Ottoman conquest I'll talk about. There's nothing much to say about the Russians. They they were about... Look, they were, they were about... Four techs in military behind me when I declared war on him. It was it was a whitewash. It was so easy. Um, different thing about the Ottomans was that they were actually superior in technology, military technology to me. And by the time of the second war, um, I think the border was something around like that, where my mouse is pointing. By the time of the second war, 
they actually had a whole nother unit group ahead of me. And um, obviously this is because I'm focusing on, you know, diplomacy and stuff in Central Europe. Uh, so that was a hard war, but I allied the Persians temporarily to defeat them. Um, they got some land around here. They got this late game about 120 years ago. I dissolved our alliance, but you know, it's all, all good, all good. Um, eventually, I managed to release, uh, I think I, I got this province and I released Bulgaria. Fed in the vassals of it, fed the vassal all its cores. Obviously, that's a good thing to do. Um, I released Mas uh, not Macedonia. I released Byzantium. Got them all the cores back and some. So obviously, I gave him something like that, um, some provinces like that. Um, and I fed him. I fed him most of southern Anatolia. And th this was a series of about four wars, getting all of Anatolia. There's so there was so much development at the time. Um, and eventually I made, like I said before, client state, the Latin Empire, so it was a bit of historical friction. But um, they, they owned most of northern Anatolia as well as Constantinople, I think. Yeah, but um, eventually I annexed them. Um, as I pushed further into Anatolia, my main goal was obviously to um, reform the HRE, but it was to form the Roman Empire that should have been. So, uh, as you can see, I own all... All of the Mediterranean, all of the Mediterranean. I mostly own Europe. Every obviously can't see, but everything in Europe, as apart from Britain, but they're hardly part of Europe. <laughs> um, everything in Europe is mine. I own most of Europe. I say most, but I really don't want to say. I want to say all, but I really can't. Um, uh, I, obviously, I pushed Portugal off, but you know, all the Mediterranean. This is a great achievement. Um, built the Suez Canal. Built the uh, what is it? Holstein Canal? That's not the Holstein Canal. Uh, Kiel Canal. Kiel Canal, that's right. Um, and I could have almost... Oh, I haven't talked about this yet. I can almost um, build the Panama Canal, but obviously I cannot. So yeah, own all the Mediterranean, own all of Europe. Um, released a client state here. Fed in the vassals from... Fed them the provinces from Russia and um, other small cities, city-states there. Um, so that about does it. Obviously, you can see I conquered all of Northern Europe. Um, most of them was from small, you know, uncivilized nations, pretty easy to conquer, such as Tunis. Um, refed the cores of Mamluks back to them, conquered that, conquered these cities, so it's all a whitewash after I formed the HRE. Now, uh, as you can see, I have a lot of colonies here, and that obviously is because of Spain. Spain's a very big colonizer in this game, and they managed to colonize most of, uh, most of, I'd say most of South America and a lot of Western Africa. So I inherited all of this. Um, unfortunately, I never had time to organize a massive frontier against Mali. I believe they're actually Catholic. They are Catholic. That's an interesting, interesting um, result. I didn't think that could happen. Um, Congo is obviously Catholic. Um, so yeah, I never managed to do a, like a massive campaign against them. Now I think in hindsight, I probably should have just to expand that name a bit bigger. But you know, I was focused in Europe, I just focused elsewhere. Uh, my colonies, the only real time I focused on them was when I destroyed the Inca, which wasn't that long ago. That was about, yeah, no, oh no, gone down. That was about, yeah, 30 or 30 odd years ago, 20 odd years ago. So um, that was the only time I really focused on expanding these colonies. Obviously, I wanted to build the Panama, Panama Canal. But um, other than that, they did well. Oh, <laughs> okay. Holland, Holland, the capital of Holland is Rio de la Plata. So obviously they got kicked out. Oh yeah, they must have got kicked out when I formed the HRE or something and one of the electors conquered one of their provinces. I don't know. Something, something happened obviously. Um, that's that's a bit funny. I think at one point actually... Oh, oh, hang on. Dutch Tunisia. Dutch Tunisia, there you go. That's funny. Um, at one point I think they were... Uh, the Mali were guaranteeing their independence of them. So that was a bit funny. Anyway. Um, what else can I show you? Obviously I'm Catholic, like I said in the religious wars, um, there was no war, it was just a league. Um, yeah, after I took out Anatolia, the Ottomans were pretty, pretty weak down here, um, just took all that. Most of this is, in fact, hang on, what's my religious unity? 122%. So, yeah, most of this is Catholic. Um, so I, I could say that Catholicism is probably, in fact, let's just check the ledger. Catholicism, is it in here? Oh yeah, 
this is a nice little tab. <laughs> um, HRE. It was always Austria. It was always Austria. Let's go back. Previous rulers. How many rulers do I have? This is an interesting little tab. Here you go. You have a lot of rulers. These were my rulers. Lots and lots of rulers. Um, sorry. <laughs> Keep closing the tab. Okay. Where can I find? I swear. I completely forgot what I was trying to find. Um, it's religion. Religious. Religious. Might be in yeah, religion. There you go. Defender of the faith. I've been defender of the faith for like ever. Um, here you go. So, so Catholicism. Oh, she. Oh yeah, that's because it's Persia. So Catholicism. Twenty-one countries have Catholicism. Um, Twelve hundred and fifty provinces are Catholic. That's beautiful. And the next best is Shia, which is here, and they have, you know, in fact, Sunni has been what? Sunni only has a hundred, that's funny. That is very funny. So yeah, there you go. That's an interesting little save there. Anyway, I pretty much conquered, other than, other than the fact that I have a trade, I got so many achievements on this, this save. Um, I've trade monopolies over, I have 100%, you know, concepts enabled, that's pretty neat. Um... Obviously, I have trade superiority everywhere in Europe. 100% there, 98%, 100% Kiev, you know. It's just classic. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Getting 93 ducats a month. That's with full fort maintenance. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I'm just going to play it now so we get to the end screen. Obviously, I showed you the timeline. So, uh, one stability, 100%. Oh yeah, that's that's all good stuff. Forty ideas, forty ideas. Took a lot of um, influence ideas first, just to get that you know diplomacy. My main focus in this game was diplomacy from the start. Um, every extension eighty, that's from the conquest of uh, Britain, as you can see. Six hundred and thirty-one provinces. That is beastly. Obviously, it's not the one k provinces, but you know, still fine. We had obviously the largest army, largest navy. What was that? So we had. Our manpower was 774k. Um, we had 800. We fielded. I at the end. By the end, I didn't even need the this uh this cap here. I just used the 880 troops I had. Out of 1,000, I could have made a million men. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, we had the largest army, largest navy, most provinces, highest province value, highest income, highest trade income. So I guess you could say, oh, obviously, I'm man there. Uh, guess you could say we won. <laughs> uh Whatever that means. So, look at this score: 20,673. 20, See if you guys can beat that. Um, if you can, let me know. I'll, I might review, right, might review your empire, and uh, uh, you'll have my respect. So, um, anything else to show you? China's a mess. India's pretty unified. Um, Punjab got kicked out. Yamper got kicked out. Sorry, I thought about this before. Aita got pretty well. Russia colonized three. It's a three-way colonization war against Australia. Um, Russia colonized the Philippines. I got some colonies in here. I think that was from some wars and Spain. Other than that, nothing too snazzy. Brazil's independent. Portugal won the American colonial colonization war. A lot of these are independent, though. That's the thing. Russia's big. Japan's getting wrecked by Russia I believe uh, anyway uh, so thank you guys for watching as always uh, I hope you enjoyed this great empire uh, yeah so hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time goodbye